Welcome back, YouTubers, to another Raw review with us, Da British Fest. Meches, I'm Mr. Parky, and once again with this Metallica shirt, which so many people seem to like, so I'm going to wear it again and again and again. And this guy sitting next to me, well, you like all of this guy, it's better than MJ, people. What's up? Please subscribe, like, and put your thoughts on this Raw down in the comments section below. And make sure you contact us in the link in the Taguchi box below. Yes, indeed. And after that Raw last week, which emanated from the UK, kind of expected something a little bit better this week, but I um, guess we'll just get right onto it, really. We are started off with a, a very weird opener. It wasn't a usual 15-minute promo. It was Ricardo Rodriguez versus Zeb Coulter versus Biggie Langston. The winner gets to, the winner gets to pick the stipulation for the match at Extreme Rules. Okay, only Ricardo and Del Rio got an entrance, so Ziggler was just out there doing nothing. Ricardo gets the victory. It was a weird, but at least different opener. It's the best way I can really describe this. I've got one thought of this match, just one thought. Number one, well, one big thought, is that the match should have been the match we get in Extreme Rules, and the winner gets to pick the stipulation. That's what I thought. It's having Zeb and Ricardo wrestle, you should have the three that are in the Extreme Rules match fighting for their contender. No, you don't want to give the pay-per-view match away for free, so I can understand why they did this. It was a bit weird, but different, and I don't really know what to say about this. But at the end of the day, Ricardo Rodriguez wins, and El Rio gets to pick the stipulation, which he does later on in the night. And that's all we really need to know here. We have John Cena make a wish segment. Um, all I'll say here is I respect John Cena, the person... However, I do not like John Cena, the character. That is all I'm going to say. I'm going to leave it at that. Last week, we had the WWE making buyback a really strong heel with that promo against McFoley in the audience. This week, they're making Cena look as face as they can. And I just like your Russian buyback's heel turn last week. This week, you're just trying to hammer in that Cena the face. It's good what they're doing, though, isn't it, with the Make-A-Wish Foundation? Yes. You've got to admit, you can't, you can't say that's a bad thing. Orton versus Cody Rhodes. Um, this is probably the best Cody Rhodes has looked in quite some time. He had a competitive match with Randy Orton. He nearly actually got the pinfall on him after the crossroads. Really good finish with the RKO. It was kind of a filler match. It was all there just to get to a little interview afterwards of Orton saying that he's focused and giving a second RKO to my favorite wrestler, unfortunately. I find this funny that the WWE are not going to give up trying to show how low... Team Rose Scholar slash Cody Rose has gone by putting up against Orton. May have been a good match, good to watch, good moves and stuff. But we all knew the result. We knew that Cody Rose there was to put, uh, do that thing for Orton and then Orton cut the promo, which again, he's bringing up how big this match is, the most extreme I've been. Yeah, Orton. Indeed, but at least this makes Cody Rose look a lot better than going up against tons of funk and job into 10 sides. Sorry, sweet tea. We had Bellas versus the Funkadactyls. Twin Magic Roll-Up wins it quickly. The referee finally spotted the big jugs on, I believe, Nikki Bella this time, and they reversed the decision. There was a brawl in the ring. Didn't watch this match. The Shield promo. Basically, the Shield were touting their success in WWE over all the top superstars, including Undertaker, Sheamus, Ryback, you know, The Rock, etc. For some reason, out come 3MB, and it turns out they're just pretty much cannon fodder for Team Hell No coming out, and... Uh, there being all that happening and going down, etc. Well, I think with this promo, I expect good stuff from the Shield. And this week, we just got them to kind of tell a story of where they, how they got, who they went through. 3MB obviously coming back to get revenge on that week they didn't. But we all knew it was all going to be a big, massive rumble between the uh, Team Hell No, the Shield and... Three and Pretty much. The Shield end up fleeing, even though they have a numbers advantage, of course. That's what cowardly heels do, unfortunately. And Team Hell No end up beating up uh, 3MB. You know, you're not letting them touch too much yet, and you're at least making Kane and Daniel Bryan look good against the Jobber faction. So I'll say about that. I'm looking forward to this possible tag match. We're going to be hopefully getting Extreme Rules. They're doing it right. Uh, the um, Shield have been brought up quite strongly. Team Hell Not are still long range champions. I'm looking forward to this. Dolph Ziggler versus Kobe Kingston. In that time, you know, we've seen this about 50 times over the last three or four years. Um, it was a competitive match. We expect this from Dolph Ziggler and Kobe Kingston, even though Kobe Kingston is, you know, shouldn't really be having a competitive match with Dolph Ziggler when Dolph Ziggler is now the World Heavyweight Champion, but all right. Again, I do enjoy this match. These two good performers. Kofi almost getting the full three count on Ziggler. Was good. The crowd seemed to like it. I liked it at the same time. It should not be happening. 
to Ziggler and Ziggler's our main eventer, Kofi's not. And it's one of those repeated matches that we keep talking about. You say that Dolph Ziggler is a main eventer. <laughs> He's meant to be. Yeah. <laughs> meant to be a main eventer. <laughs> that just makes me laugh. And um, we might be getting me maybe getting Big E versus Kofi for the US title. May as well do it. At least it'll be a new opponent for Kofi. And this is the thing. They need to give Lankin a feud eventually. They brought him up so he's been dominating. He's now going to go against Kofi. They teased it. Why not make it? I see uh, Caitlin got Full Killer's hat that he sent her. Nice little gift from Full Killer for Caitlin, wasn't it? Favourite diva, by the way. Why doesn't AJ ever get my gifts? I know, I don't really get it. She sucks. Oh, hey, just doesn't matter. Uh, Lesnar and Triple H had a video package. Move on. Jack Swagger versus Zack Ryder. Swagger wins. Move on. <laughs> yeah, bit of match. <laughs> oh, we had a tug of war. Oh, fucking hell. Um, Mark Henry versus Sweet T started us off. That was an easy victory for Mark Henry. Brodus Clay, another easy victory. This whole tug of war thing was just like... Huh? <laughs> well, with me, I thought, again, Mark Henry... As he goes up against future opponents, yes, it would have been better if it was going to get the Ryback feud. They moved past that quickly with Henry coming on top. And this, I think they're the two, you could, the best two you could use for this kind of style True. match. Two strong guys. So to show Mark Henry strength, it did its job. I mean, they're continuing on the Seamus Mark Henry feud. It's just, it's uh, you, why not? I don't know. Put them in a match. I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. The top of war thing was a bit silly, but I guess it helps show Mark Henry's strength. Um, you have Seamus come out wanting to take part because we all know Seamus loves a good tug of war fella. And basically, Seamus outsmarts Mark Henry and gives him a bro kick. And I'm thinking, oh, this is why I hate Seamus. And down goes Mark Henry. Pretty much. Del Rio versus Cesaro in the next match. Um, it was pretty competitive. Again, it's not, you know, the problem with Cesaro isn't his wrestling. It's the gimmick. And he has a competitive match with Del Rio. You have the Ole chance, you know, which... Generally, is a thing Bell Generico, but I guess they're going to use that for Del Rio now, even though the fans were doing it because they were probably bored of the match, I guess. If Cesaro had better build than these non-important matches, because he doesn't seem to be going anywhere, this is a match that I could possibly see happening because of uh, Cesaro's weak building, in my opinion. Yes, he's been against main eventers, but no feud, no real storyline. I just... Don't care about this. Antonio Cesaro might as well be a jobber for the stars. That's probably what the US Championship is for now. Um, and Alberto Dario after the match, after he beats Antonio Cesaro after a competitive match, uh, he picks a ladder match. So Swagger, Ziggler and Dario in a ladder match at Extreme Rules. That should at least be an interesting match. I'll say that. And when we've seen that Ziggler became Mr. Money in the Bank through a ladder match and the performance he could put in against another built guy... This should be a good match for Extreme Rules. Speaking of gimmicks, uh, Fandango versus Carly in a dance-off. Um, it was really funny, actually, because I heard the crowd pop more after Fandango's dance with Summer, lovely Summer Rae than I did after Carly's dance. Um, the C Carly wins because it's all a popularity contest, as we know, and Fandango attacks him post-match. Not Num much else to report here. Number one, the Mike Time stub bringing Jericho into this, I guess, teasing the continuation of the feud. The match itself, the crowd cheered greatly for Carly, a guy that we keep saying we want him to be released, to Fandango, a guy that I still see as becoming face eventually because he's got the crowd behind him. But with, the, with this booing and giving cheers to Carly, no sense. Yeah, so eh, at least you're playing to Fandango's gimmick, I guess. I don't know, just, again, there's another segment where I was just like, you know, move on. Um... The main event of the evening was supposed to be Ryback and Cena versus The Shield, but they changed it various times. They had Ryback walk out of the arena because, you know, now he's heel. And what better way to establish a monster heel than have him walk out of the arena? Cena was hurt, but of course, because he's John Cena, still has to wrestle. So we ended up getting Team Hell No versus and Cena versus The Shield. Um, Surprised to see Roman Reigns get the pin on John Cena in this match? Again, this is goes back to the Shield's big promo, how they've taken everyone out, got big wins over big people. A win over Cena, even though he's injured or meant to be injured, it definitely played the part. Cena was doing what he could to prove that he's still going to be there, he's still strong as ever, he's going to go against Ryback. But for the Shield to get another big win, we're still waiting for them to lose, but I thought this was good for the Shield. Uh, good for the Shield, um, but the segment itself just, I, again, this is a segment where I was just like, you know, eh, I'm not that bothered. 
Uh, Ryback appears on the stage afterwards, and um, there's an injured Cena in the ring, yet the heel doesn't want to prowl on the injured baby face. But okay, that's uh, Ryback for you now, I guess, the cowardly heel. Um, so overall thoughts on this show? I, I did thought this was a pretty standardly boring Raw, personally. Throughout Raw, there was teases of stuff that were going to get build up Extreme Rules. We've got stipulations or matches made for the Extreme Rules. I thought they did a good job there, but there was filler that also teased or did stuff for Extreme Rules. So I think they did a bit of Extreme Rules in this, but not enough to entertain everyone. We have three matches for Extreme Rules, Triple H and Lesnar. John Cena, Ryback, and the Triple Threat whatever Championship match. Let's get some more matches announced in the next couple of weeks, please, WWE. So all I'm going to say about that, Raw, you leave us your thoughts in the comment section below. This has been a very quick, swift review from us, the British Fist. Thank you. And please outro us, MJ. Thank you very much for watching, people. And all I can say is sooner or later, we're going to be seeing the return of a Triple H and Brock Lesnar, maybe next week, week after. But from the British Fist, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, Raw. If not, share us in the comments below. And until next time, goodbye.